All right, guys, as we run through the last um, episode, okay, I need to shut down one of the systems. Sorry. That's why it's echoing. How is my sound now? Please confirm for me, those of you at home. Is it better now? Awesome. Thank you. I Sorry, I left one of the systems on, which I shouldn't have left. All right. Um, guys, just want to start the day. I had a plan, but I think I might just alter the plan a little bit. Um, let me see something here quickly. Let me see something here. Did we do Dupla? We did, right? Okay, we did Doppler. All right, I want to do something. I saw something today that looked very fascinating. And let me see if I can quickly pull it up. All right, so I'm just going to go to my resource file again. Uh, crazy physics, and uh, there we go. Plug and play. Very fast, maybe two, three minutes on this physics resources please pull out your formula pages pull out your formula pages i'm going to give you a little three minutes how would you approach this question i just want to see your approach so i'm going to cut a little section of the question uh, i'm interested in how you, because Guys, let me be honest with you. I cannot say as a teacher, I have taught you everything. I can't. I'm being honest. I, I, I may have given you the principles, but exam is exam. But before we go there, I saw this question as well today. And I remember that this we did almost exactly like this, if you remember. I don't know if the guys at home can see this. Okay, let me, this is not the main aim anyway, but we did this exactly this way. And when I saw it, I was quite excited to say, oh, um, we did something similar. Please, guys, can you get me an answer here in 60 seconds? Quickly. Let's use the time wisely. When I say 60 seconds, let's try, including reading. Make sure you are done correctly <laughs> because, because you can be done. <laughs> Do you remember we did? Well, we had to calculate something somewhere. I'm just giving the grace for 20 seconds in case there's somebody who's still. Are you done? Please take time again, go to that multiple choice session that I did, and uh, try. Four, three, two, one. Answer is C. Make sense? The correct answer is C. It was doubled. It means the current then moves from 150 to what? The voltage, 150 to 300. But the time has to be what? Shortened, because it's halfway now. I remember we had to sketch the graph of this thing. Awesome. So if something like this were to pop up, you know what to do. Uh, what type of emission is this? Check your note. You'll find it there. White light is passed through a cold. That actually tells it all. Once I see the word cold, I, I, I know I'm done. Quickly. 45 seconds. Do 
You really checking your notes? Okay. Look, when I see the word code, I know it's an absorption spectrum. Is that okay? It's an absorption. And if it's an absorption, the electrons are absorbing energy. They are moving from what? A lower to a higher. What's my answer? Lower to higher, D, and absorption. We're done. But if you see hot medium, it is what? Emission. We're done. And from higher to lower. We don't even want to waste time on some of these concepts. You see, that is something you can do in multiple choice instead of praying. Some of you are going to be praying now. Please. Do I believe in prayer? Yes. But prayer at the right time. All right. Yeah, if you don't study, you can sleep in church. You will fail. <laughs> All right. Uh, this is the question. It is four marks. Use your formula page. It's just an isolated question on its own. I just love it. I'll give you one and a okay, two minutes because it's something you need to conjure formulas together. But please give it a trial. Let's make it three.
Ah, time is up. What happened to my green, 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 green? Ah, ah, I don't like it like that. I, I, that's what I was waiting for, you know. I was just busy with my phone. They're waiting for green, green, green. Then my eyes went there. I'm thinking, what's going on? Did you try to get an answer? <gasps> what's a good one? Did you guys try to get an answer? Now, what did I tell you about calculations? Write the things you have. Is that okay? And then see how you can put things together. It says, an ammeter registers a constant current of what? 0, 0,0128. So, my first information is that what? I. I hope this will teach you to finally listen to what I've been telling you. Because it looks strange. All right. I is equal to what? 0, 0,0128. Calculate what? The minimum number. What is the symbol for number? Number is just N. That's what I'm looking for. Of photons that will strike the cathode in what? 10 seconds. T is equal to what? Now you are trying to see, how do I connect all of this together? Check through your formula page. There's only one formula in your formula page that has N. Only one. N equals to Q over E, right? But I like to write it as this, the charge on an electron. Okay, hold on. Yes, I do know the charge on an electron, right? And today I was telling the guys that the charge on an electron is the same charge on a proton. Please take note. The charge of a proton is positive 1,6 times 10 to the power negative 19. Electron is negative 1,6. Is that okay? All right. Yeah? Uh, close. Okay. Now, check something here. So, but I have a problem. Yes, I can get QE. Is that okay? But what is Q itself? Is there a way I can connect this to I? I know Q is equal to what? I delta T. Oh, check how everything is now coming together. <laughs> yeah, is it making sense though? Are you seeing what I'm doing? That if I write what I have, I can then go to my formula page and play a few games. All right. So can I then say n is equal to what? I delta t over what? QE. Do I know I, by the way? 0, 0,012. Do I know T? 10. Do I know the charge on an electron? All right. 1,6 times 10 to the power negative what? 19. Give me an answer. Got to this point. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. 7, 7, times 10 to the power what? 17. But this is what? Electrons. But what do we know? The number of electrons actually equal to the number of what? Photons. I, I did mention this specifically like this, but I mentioned it by telling you about intensity. That if the number of photons increase, the number of electrons will also what? Increase. Let's take note. One electron will, one photon will always eject what? One electron. Therefore, the number of protons will therefore be what? 7,5 times 10 to the number of what? Uh, power 17. You see now, even if they didn't conclude, they are sitting on three marks. Uh, photons. is a very good attempt. Very, very good. So, believe when I say write the things down. Stay close to your formula page and try to work things around. Is that okay? Alright. So, I was in the class today and the paper they gave me had 
this. Oh, Frederick. Okay. But did it make sense now, guys? So you learn what I've been saying. When you, as you read, start writing down your variables. Make sense? Start writing down your variables and get things sorted. Awesome. All right. Um, I saw that and I thought, oh, why not? Let's play around with it. Uh, there was a momentum question I gave you because I did momentum yesterday and I don't want to do that too much again today. But I gave you one momentum question. Oh, thank you. Awesome. Awesome. Tuto. Tuto. Hi. I'm, I'm very good. I'm, I'm very good. Do what you need to do. And such a darling. All right. There was this question, minus nine. No, let's quickly look at it. Two identical metal polished balls. We are told that they are identical with mass of what? M. It means it's M, M. Is that fine with you? All right. Uh, on a smooth surface, collide what? Elastically. Please, what is elastic collision? It's a collision where both what? Momentum and what? Kinetic what? Energy are conserved. Please take note of that. Both momentum, this is elastic. A lot of people will just tell you kinetic energy is conserved. And that's wrong. Both momentum and kinetic energy are what? Conserved. What does that mean? Momentum before equals to momentum after. Kinetic energy before equals to kinetic energy after. All right. Now, initially, ball A has a, has a velocity of 4. Okay? You're supposed to get this. I, I explained what you should do. Okay, you said you didn't try. Yeah. What's number? Why, why do you have three variables? You add M, you have VI, and you have VF. Okay, let's see. Initially, ball A has a velocity of 4, which is in the diagram, right? Um, and after collision, a velocity of 0, 0,4, also to the right. Ball B, which was moving right before collision, it was moving. So there's an initial velocity there, okay? Um, before the collision with an unknown velocity, moves faster after the collision with an unknown. All right, so you're right. We don't know M, we don't know VIB, we don't know VFB. Is that okay? Calculate the velocity of the ball, B, before and after. All right. The key word is what I underlined, elastic. Is that okay? What do we know? Momentum before is equal to momentum after. You notice they are all moving to the right. So let's take right as positive. Sweet. Can I write my formulas? I hope I'll be able to get it though. M1, VI1 plus M2, VI2 equals to what? M1, VF1 plus M2, VF2. Do we agree? Momentum is conserved. What is the mass of the first one? M1. It's M. What's the initial velocity? 4. What is the mass of M2? M. What's the initial velocity? We don't know. What is the mass? M. Final velocity? 0, 0,4. Plus M and what? VF2. I told you that the M goes. What's common there? M, what do we have? 4 plus VI2 equals to M. What do you have? 0, 0,4 plus VF2. Divide both sides by M. What do you have? 4 plus VI2 equals to what? 0, 0,4 plus VF2. We can make VI2 the subject of formula. Let's move it there. What do we have? VF2, 0, 0,4 minus 4, negative 3,6. I have equation one. Equation one came from what? Momentum. Because it's an elastic collision. What do we then do? We know that if it's elastic, momentum is conserved. Kinetic energy is also what? 
concept. So what would I have? Half, half MVI squared plus, no, uh, half M, it's half MV squared, right? M1 VI1 squared plus half M2 VI2 squared equals to half M1 VF1 squared plus half M2 VF2 squared. Did that, does that make sense to you? Okay, guys, is it okay to just cancel half M? So, 1 over 2M, what's our initial velocity? 4 squared plus VI squared, VI2 squared. Everybody okay there? Half M, what is our final velocity? 0, 0,4 squared plus VF2 squared. Do you notice the half M goes? So what do I have? VI2 squared equals to what? Uh, VF, I'm, I'm doing, I'm cutting a lot of steps now. VF2 squared. Remember I have a 16 on this side. Okay, let me, don't let me cut it. That's fine with you. What is 0, 0,4 squared? 0, 0,16. VI2 squared will therefore be VF2 squared minus 15,94. 84. 15, comma what? 84. Equations now. But what is, so this is my equation what? 1. What is this? What is VI squared though? It is VF squared minus 3,6, which I can actually bring in there. <laughs> we can go to another question now. <laughs> but let's, let's just finish it. What do we have? So VF2 minus 3,6 squared equals to what? VF2 squared minus 15, comma. So the answer was in seeing the elastic part. Can we square this? Can we foil this? What are we going to have? VF2 squared minus 7,2 VF2 plus 3,6 squared. Twelve comma nine six equals to what? VF2 squared minus 15 comma what? Eight four. Are you aware that this and this would cancel each other if I bring it up there? So what, guys, I am, I'm done now. You can finish up from here. Because you just need to take that one over there and get your what? VF2. Is that okay? And when you get your VF2, you take it back into the equation to get your VFI. So the main thing is to see that we are dealing with an elastic... Um, and when it is elastic, what happens? Both momentum and kinetic energy are conserved. Did that make sense, guys? All right. Uh, let me just put this here. Minus 7, 2 VF2 equals to negative 15, 84 minus 12, 96. You can then continue. Make sense, guys? All right. So they try to hide so a lot of things. The examiner is really checking. Do you know your definition of an elastic what? Collision. Oh, well, it's better than nah. It's better than zero. It's better than zero. But at this stage, I want us to start learning to think out of the box and get a lot of marks. All right. So. We're getting a lot of, um, sorry, just want to do something on this question that I did. Uh, uh, where's that question I did? I need to send that picture over. And we continue.
Awesome. All right. Let's keep the game moving for today. What do we have in stock for today? Today's work, that projectile motion, Newton's laws work that much. Uh, let's look at this one. It told, <laughs> what happened? Did this today. What happened to it? I don't know. Too. Okay, we'll find one. Okay, just remind. Please be on my case. You did, did, was this easy? You did it. it was easy? Eh? It was. Okay, let's see. A, tr a tow truck attempts to throw a broken down car of mass 400. The coefficient of static friction is 0, 0,6, and the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0, 0,4. Okay, one information there, please take note. Kinetic friction will always be lesser than static. All right. A tow chain connects. Eh? What's the difference? Good question. Static friction is the friction you must overcome for the object to move. Kinetic friction is the friction that an, a moving object has. So when the object is stationary, what's keeping it there is static friction. You must overcome that for the object to do what? To move. Once the object starts moving, it changes from static to kinetic. Is that okay? All right. So kinetic friction is the force opposing the motion of a moving object. Take note of that definition. You could be tested. All right. So a tow chain connects the tow truck to the car, as shown in the diagram below. Calculate the force required to just move the car if the rope is parallel. What are we looking for? Force to just move the car. All right? Force to just move the car. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? How are we going to get that done? Uh, one second. Right, uh, okay, one second, guys. I'm just gonna find because those chairs are not good. One second now. Uh, in the meantime, you said you've tried this question. Some tried, some did not. Okay, can you just quickly share ideas, guys? I will be back in a few seconds.
All right, sorry for that. Uh, just sorting out something quickly. Now, a tow truck, calculate the force required to just move the car. Look, the, for me, I would say a free body diagram will always help me. Okay, so since we're focusing on the car, at this stage, I cannot use kinetic friction. I have to use what? Static. That's where the um, juicy part of the question is. So if I were to draw a free body diagram on the car, what forces do I have? I'm going to run quickly. I have normal, right? What else do I have? FG. I've got tension pulling the car there. And since the car is supposed to move in this direction, but it's not moving, watch this. I'm going to have static friction, which is actually either equal to or greater than what? Tension. So, tension, static friction, normal, and what? The weight. This time around, equal. Object is what? Stationary. Make sense? Now, what do I know? F net is equal to what? MA. We're looking for the force that will just move. Which force? That force must be equal to the static what? Friction. Does that make sense? Because we're saying F net is equal to what? MA. But the car is stationary. Acceleration is what? Zero. So F net should be equal to what? Zero. It means tension minus static friction. We are basically saying the tension is equal to the static friction, which is mu K, sorry, not mu K, mu S N. Make sense? And our normal is mu S in this case, mg. Normal is equal to gravity there. Is that fine with you? Make sense? Okay. So what do we have? What is coefficient? Talk to me. 0, 0,6. What is the mass of the car? 400. What is G? 9,8. What's your answer? 3, 5, 2. So what did you guys do? Use. But do you understand why it why that is now equal to the force? Plus? Why plus one? No, plus one is just too much. You you need this is what will just move the car. This is what you must overcome. To move the car. All right. So, yeah. You cannot say plus one. Are you aware that that plus, plus one is just too much? Plus zero comma zero one. So, this is just to move the car. All right. To keep the car moving at constant. I love the examiner here. This examiner is testing. If you understand the difference between kinetic and static. This is number one. Static. Number two. Kinetic. Again. F net is still equal to what? MA. But if we say constant speed, acceleration is equal to what? Zero. Now, the object is now moving. So here we are looking at what? Static. Here we are looking at what? Kinetic. Is it? Do you get the whole idea? Object is now moving. But F net is still equal to what? Zero. So this time around, T minus fk is equal to zero does that make sense to you so t is equal to what fk which is what mu k mg what's our mu k zero comma four times 400 multiplied by nine comma eight this is such a beautiful examiner 50 What can, look, can you, do you see that it is easier to keep an object moving than to start the object? I'll give you a very good example. Check. If I need to push a car, it is harder to move the car from the spot than when the car is already rolling. When you want to move, everybody's uh, 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 showing so much power. 
But when the car is moving, you can even be talking to someone and putting your hand there. Why? It is less force required because kinetic friction is always smaller than static friction. Uh, T, is it wrong to say, if T, for which one? For, no, it, uh, it's wrong. It must be equal. It must be equal. You cannot say greater. Once it's greater, the object is already moving. It says just to move. It means we need to overcome the force holding it down. Yes, you are saying something? <laughs> okay, you, sorry. You, you remember. Uh, guys, is this concept okay? Is it okay? I love this concept that was tested here. Difference between static and kinetic. And they can ask me in multiple choice. Which one is greater? Now you know that static will always be greater than what? Kinetic. So put that note down. Static friction is greater than kinetic. Guys, look, every concept we explain, the thinking of multiple choice, what can they test me on here? Why is it? Two marks. Because we are not marking this formula again. You see here, this one is three marks, right? I'm going to mark that, mark that, mark that. But this formula and this formula are the same. So I'm just going to mark the substitution and the answer now. Are we okay? All right, I need to run. I need to run. You might just need to take pictures or do something, but I gotta run. Run. You wanna take pictures? Okay. Because I know right now your hands are itchy. You want the phone. Okay. All right, guys, let's check this one. Um, a rocket of mass 20,000 kg moves vertically upward with a uniform acceleration. Guys, once they say uniform acceleration, it means from rest to a velocity of what? Tw uh, 40 meters per second in 1,6 from rest to 40. What's happening? The velocity is increasing. It's not a free fall. The free fall, the velocity will be decreasing as it's going up. Right. State Newton's third law. I'm skipping all definitions, guys. Please. Draw a labeled free body diagram. I'm not skipping this one. What are the forces you are looking at? The object has a mass. So definitely, there's the force of what? Gravity. All right. But do you notice that the velocity of the object is increasing? it means the force opposite gravity is actually bigger than gravity. So there must be a force. Stronger. What is this? Force what? Applied. Two marks. Either force applied or force of the engine. Okay, people are throwing kisses here. All right. What is the magnitude and direction of the total force exerted on the rocket? During the, I, I just even answered. I, I said the force going upward must be bigger than the force going downward. That force is upwards. Right. It says a rocket of mass 20 kg, blah, blah, blah. What is the magnitude and direction of the total force exerted on the rocket during the first 1,6 seconds? Write what you have. Right, what we have. The examiner said total force. What are we looking for? F net. Makes sense? So it's another language. But what do I know? Initial velocity, it started from rest, zero. Final velocity, 40 meters per second. What is the mass? 20 what? Thousand. So can we say F net is equal to MA? What is this actually? Um, VF minus vi over what delta t do we agree the mass 20. what is the final 40 initial zero what is the time 1 comma 6 what's your answer once you write the things you need to write down 
it, it, it becomes easy. 500,000. All right. 500,000 what? New things. Where? Up. Yeah? Saved. Huh? Why did? Had. How? Okay, wait. F net equals to what? Delta P over what? What is delta P? Uh huh. M. E F <laughs> minus V I over what? Are we not? Okay. An astronaut of mass 80 kilograms is carried in a space capsule. Determine the resultant force acting on him during the 1,6 seconds. An astronaut of mass 80 is carried inside. What is the resultant force acting during the first 1,6 seconds? I like your I like your facial expression. <laughs> All right. Guys, if the object is moving at constant velocity, we're gonna say acceleration is equal to what? Zero. Is that okay? One second. F equals to VI plus A delta T. Okay. But uniform acceleration. One second, guys. Just checking something here. F net, therefore, is the addition of the two side plus uh, M. Hold on. Um, if I say F net the net force, because the net force is actually force applied minus Fg. Calculate the total force exerted on the rocket during upward mine. Let, let, let's, I want to try something else, but I should be getting the same answer. One second, trust, gas. All right, let's see. I was just make sense. We calculate acceleration first. Give me, wait, hold on, hold on. 20, guys, I'll be with you now. 20,000 times 25, all right, equals to 500,000 minus 1,000 times 9.
Uh, I disagree. Because if you then say, check, let's look at something. If you then say, I'm just, I, I, I'm looking at the memo here. They said F total, because I want us to agree together. We're scientists, we can argue things out, right? But check, where is gravity acting? Downwards. It's a negative force. I then have W plus MA, there's something wrong here. Already, what is this? This is F net. When, when I say F, we are, this and this are actually the same thing. F net equals to MA. When I say F net, I already have weight involved from the free. Agree with me? And, well, if I'm making a mistake, it's possible. But... Eh? Okay, but, but I, 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 I believe in what I just did here right now. It, it makes a lot of sense. Yes, I see that they calculated acceleration, right? Which is okay. Because it's uniform acceleration. There's nothing wrong with it. Because this is our acceleration here. Right, and then F net equals to MA because we're looking for the net force. Uh, I think we can, we can safely agree that. Uh, yeah. All right. Are we okay? Now, an astronaut of mass 80 kg is carried in, sp in the space capsule. What does this mean? Now, please listen. Determine the resultant force acting on him. If I look at the man in the capsule, what are the forces acting? That free body diagram could also actually represent the man. He has a weight, but there's a force that is pushing him up. He is moving at the same acceleration as the capsule itself. Is that okay? All right. So if we can get, then get acceleration, which we said acceleration is what? Vf? minus vi over delta t. What is vf? 40. Because the guy is also moving at 40. And the guy also has traveled for 1,6. What's your answer here? All right. So the guy is moving at what? 25. Now, if I draw a free body there and the weight. Make sense? Now, can we then say um, the force upward minus the force what? Downward. So force on man. This is the weight. Mg. This force on the man. And what is F? F equals to what? Ma. What is the mass of the man again? 80. And the man is moving at what acceleration? Y25. Because it's moving in contact with the object, right? What is the mass of the man again? 80. What is the acceleration due to gravity? 9,8. Now, do you see that we cannot accept what they did at first because they're asking the same question. There's nothing wrong with the rocket. No, they are just two entities. Making sense, though? All right. So what should our answer be here? We should be subtracting. What is 80 times 25? 2,000. Minus, what is 80 times 9,8? 7? 84. Your answer? 1, 2. Is it making sense, guys? So it's the same concept that F net equals to what? MA. Everybody okay? Awesome. But I'll still check with my colleagues and debate on that question. We always learn. I'm not going to end it there. Uh, one thing I always refuse to say is just that the memo is wrong. Tomorrow, all the physics guys in my school are in problem. All of them. 
That's what we do. Somebody sees a question, we all put heads together and argue, 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 argue. And from there, we start diverting. So we keep learning. Learning doesn't stop. The day you start... <laughs> you stop learning this good word. But guys, is my concept making sense? Awesome. All right, let's, let's move quickly. Did you do this? Bad? Not everyone did it. Okay, so let's do it together. So, so why are you looking at me like that? It's like you're listening to this guy. My phone. All right, let's run quickly. A block M1 of mass. Please take note of the words. Is that okay? What are the keywords here? Mass. 8 kg is connected by a light inextensible string which runs over a light fiction, fictionless pulley to block M2 also of mass what? 8 kg. Block M1 is moving up the incline as shown in the diagram below. The coefficient of kinetic friction between M1 and the incline is 0, 0,2. Draw a labeled free max diagram showing all the forces acting. Those things are free. Those things are free. Acting on what? Block M1. What can you tell me? Normal force. In which, okay, hold on. Normal force in which direction? It has to be perpendicular to the surface. So we have that. We all agree? Okay. Normal force. What else? FG, which is acting vertically what? Downwards. FG. What else? Tension. The object, is the object moving up or down though? M1. Moving. You see, I want to tell you that you guys read and forgot. You had to quickly read through. Do you see the seconds it took you? Everybody quickly check. <laughs> am, I, am I right? You quickly scan. So, reading. Up the incline. So, that means it's being pulled up. Do we agree? By what? By the tension. And if it's moving up the incline, where is friction? Down the incline. We know that it's not necessarily opposite each other. Friction is opposite the direction of motion. Check our four marks there in the bag. Calculate the force acting on each block separately and calculate the magnitude of the acceleration of the system. All right. Yeah? Thank you. When they ask you for this diagram, please don't bring in FG parallel and F because sometimes you mess it up and lose the marks. Draw it as simple as this first. When you want to calculate, then you do your FG parallel. And it's always safer for me. Right. So let's leave it like this. Then, but we know that to calculate, we are going to do FG parallel and FG perpendicular. What did they say? Calculate what? The f consider the forces. Oh, I said calculate. So it didn't make sense. I read it as calculate. So when they're talking to me, I'm still thinking, which forces? Because we, do you see we are used to physics? I said calculate the forces. That's what I read. If you listen, if you heard me. And I, in my head, I'm, as I'm talking to you, I'm thinking, what am I going to tell these kids? Because I don't even know how to calculate the forces. Which forces? It's true. <laughs> it's true. Hey, teaching is not easy, guys. All right. Cons and, and I don't know the memo. Which paper was this? Okay. Whatever it is. Northwest, Southwest. It's a paper. All right. What are we looking for? Calculate the what? Guys, please listen. Listen. If they give you something like this in your paper, you must get... Do you remember when I did my paper analysis with you? Here we're giving ourselves one. Remember that we just say get F net equals to what? MA. But this six marks is yours. Are common, common questions. Can we get the six marks together? All right. Already we know we, have, we are going to get one, right? <laughs> okay. But that is for, that one mark is not for you guys. It's for Elena who just comes to school and goes back home. You are here every day. 
that mark is not, uh, no, if you get that mark, uh, I will arrest you. All right, check that. Check that. Uh, the surface is that way, right? Okay. Please tell me if you are lost with any of the forces. Now what? Normal. Fg perpendicular, which is equal to mg cos. All right. Fg parallel, which is equal to mg sine. All right. That's my friction and that's my tension. Is everybody okay with this? How is the object moving? Up the plane. So positive, negative. Now my working diagram. Do you see I'm playing around with it? Okay. Um, F net, therefore, is equal to what? MA. What forces are we focusing on? We are looking at the forces causing the object. Direction of the force itself. Those are the forces I'm looking at. That's where my F net lies, right? So what do we have? T plus negative FG parallel plus negative what? FK equals to what? MA. Do we agree with that, my formula? Guys, I like using plus because it's total. I want to keep my definition. It's thumb off. Is that okay? So, if I say the sum of 5 and negative 3, it's actually 5 plus negative 3. 7, ne? Okay. <laughs> All right, uh, let's substitute T minus mg sine alpha. Do we know friction, by the way? Do we know friction? We know the coefficient. What's the coefficient? 0, 0,2. It means we need to get friction, right? Okay. Um, you guys are now smart, so I can do everything inside. Mk, nu, uh, nu kn, right? But what is your n? Go back to the diagram. N is equal to what? Mg cos. So what do we have? Mu k, Mg cos alpha. Is that making sense to you? Can I put it here straight? Mg sine alpha minus Mu k, Mg cos alpha. I hope this is making sense though. Look at what I did. That's my friction there and I just took that formula in. Can I do my soft? You notice that I didn't substitute at all. If you, by principle, I like to put, when I put numbers, I must do it once. So M, what is the mass? Are you, I only know M1, M2. I never saw it. Huh? I've got trust issues. Legit. Aha, uh -huh. I shall leave it to you. Block M1 of mass 8. <laughs> All right. So what do we have? 8, 9,8. What is the angle? I trust you. Sine 30 minus, what's the coefficient? I trust you now. You see, my trust issues are over. What is the mass? 8, 9,8. Cos what? Why 0? 30 equals to? M, do we know acceleration? No. All right, guys, do you want to give me an answer to all of this maths? Quickly, I need, I need the pace. I need the pace. Just type everything in, and I need everybody typing. Everybody typing. First person to finish gets a suite. <laughs> but easy, man. <laughs> oh, Alan, like it's free state. Okay, thank you. What's your answer? What did you do wrong? Did you put a negative? You must start with negative 8, 9, 8, and 30 minus. It's the whole thing. Huh? Abo? 
<laughs> negative 52. Okay. All right. Thank you, Regan. At least a neutral, a neutral person just sorted the whole case out. Negative what? 52 comma 78 equals to what? 8a. What are we looking for, by the way? Acceleration, right? Okay. So I can actually find t here. 8a plus 52 comma. Guys, do you understand when I said this marks, we should all get it. We all should get the six marks, please. Let's let, in case you are lacking somewhere, fix it. But now, since I have two um, unknowns, what does that mean? I need a second what? Equation. Where will I get the second equation from? All right. Let's look at this diagram. How many forces are acting on this object? Two. And, and weight. All right. Tension. Tension is acting where? Upwards, right? And the weight. T and F, G. All right. Look, a quick way to look at this. You can never have the two tensions in the same direction. First diagram we had, what was our tension? Which direction? Positive. It means this must be what? Negative. And that will be, that's one easy way to see it. Make sense? All right. So can I use F net equals to MA again? Sweet. F net equals to what? MA. What do I have? Uh, FG plus negative what? Tension equals to what? MA. What is the mass of the second object? Eight. Eh? Uh, you are lost. Okay. Check. We said upward is positive, right? So the object is moving this way. Anything in this direction is positive. <laughs> Can you see that, right? So do you see the FG? Because we are saying going that way is positive. I know, I know that a lot of people get caught. That's why I thought of this one, to say, look, the tension will always oppose each other. So if the tension here is positive, the tension here is, oh, check, negative there, right? It means this force here has to be what? Positive, which makes sense with this one now. So you can use the tension as a quick guide for yourself. Well, since I said this one is positive, the other tension should be negative. All right, MG. Eight. Uh, Tuto, I'm all yours. I trust you. Eight minus that minus T equals to what? Eight A. What is eight times ten comma eight? Seven. Eighty. Eighty comma two. Seventy-eight. Seventy-eight comma four minus T equals to what? Eight A. Can I then say seventy-eight comma four minus eight A equals to what? T and solve simultaneously that. Since both of them are equal. Ah, wow. Okay, yeah. yeah. Because I saw the 8A and the 8A, but they are not of the same signs. So my head was like, are they going to cancel out? All right. So since both of them are equal to T, can we say therefore 8A plus 57? This examiner is very. Or what? 7, 8 equals to what? 7, 8, comma 4, minus what? 8, 8. Can I, oh, you were, you were, the direction was the problem. But it's now sorted. Can, oh, yeah. Okay, I see. But now it's sorted. Okay. Can I move the 8A here? Oh, so you were waiting for me. Uh, I see. You were setting a trap, waiting that you will see. <laughs> 8A plus 8A, 16A, uh, 78,4 minus 52,78. Sorry? Ah. What is A? 1,6 meters per second square. Uh, what are we looking for? Is it magnitude? Yes. Since they said magnitude, it means there is no direction. I wanted to write seven before I was lazy to clean. 
Does, does it make sense? So please draw your free body diagram well, put your directions, F net equals to MA, Papa. You always get your answer. Uh, let's see. According to Newton's third law, which force is the reaction to the weight on block M2? Now, this is when you see action reaction. Let me quickly tell you, they must both be acting on the object. Is that okay? And they must be equal. Let's see. According to Newton's third law, which force is the reaction to the on uh, M2? <coughs> Excuse me. Huh? So, we have what? M2, which is the weight there, right? Which force is acting directly against that? Right. If, if this object was on the surface, we would have said But in this case, uh, and tension and tension are equal, I agree, but the tension, second tension is on the other object. Make sense. The two forces must be acting on the same object. Let's do something. What is the value of the tension? Can you please quickly get me the value of the tension? I want to check some from here. Everybody, just substitute, just put it in the first one. 8 multiplied by 1, comma 6 plus 52, comma Five comma. All right. This is what I'm going to do. Please understand this. It's not okay. The force acting when we say Newton's third law, force A exerts. So now, what is the weight? Listen. What is the what does the weight mean? Yes. What is yes? <laughs> if, if the weight of the object is the weight. Now, please listen. So if you see in an exam, define weight. Yeah, it's the, you draw yourself. Please listen. It is the force that the earth exerts on the object. The force of attraction that the earth exerts on the object. Is that okay? That the only, the, what's confusing us sometimes is that we draw weight from the object, but you notice we draw it down. Force exerted by the what? Earth on the object. What is the reaction force? It will be the force that the object exerts on the earth. Okay, I'm throwing you off. Please listen quickly again. Action reaction must be equal and opposite. Is that okay? Action and reaction must be what? Equal and because that is Newton's third law. If object A exerts a force on object B, object B will exert the same force, which is what? Equal but equal in magnitude, opposite in. Okay, now check this. The earth exert a, a force on ob, on the object. What would happen? The object will also exert a force on the earth. That is the action and reaction. But what is the question says? The question says, I, I, today we're doing physics. Action to the weight. What is weight is the force that the earth exerts on the object. So what is the reaction? It's going to be the force that the object exerts on the earth. That's what you're going to write. Yeah? Okay, where is the earth? Where is the earth? Okay, free fall. If we say free fall, the object is, I throw an object up. Good question, though. I threw an object up. The object is in the middle of the earth. 
What force is acting on it? The gravity. Force of, what, wait, what, what is the force of gravity? It's the weight. Uh, so don't look at it as, uh, this is ground, this is not earth. Ah, you are on the ground, Papa. You are on the ground. Is it? <laughs> no. All right. Um, guys, are you okay with that explanation? Is it making sense? So don't, don't look at the ground as the earth. Object exerts on the earth. All right. Guys, are we okay so far? Did that make sense? So the examiner was testing if we really understand weight. We understand it now? Making sense? We're good? Zwa? Are we good? Uh, sorry, I need to take this call quickly. Uh, the director is calling. All right, guys, so please let's understand what weight is, right? Weight is the force that the earth exerts on the object. Are we okay? That's why, remember I was talking about people telling that their weight is so, so, so. They're just lying that their weight is 25 grams, 25 kg. Dude, number one, weight is a force. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys, I hope it makes sense. Yeah? yeah, my mass is 75 kg. Okay, so, but we understand what weight means right, right now, right? Weight is the force exerted by the earth on the object. Therefore, we're looking at the object back on the earth. While the blocks are moving, the string breaks. What is the direction of the acceleration of block M1 immediately after the string breaks? Up or down? According to, it's up. <laughs> According to physics, it's up. Mara, it's down. All right, let's, let's, let's define it this way. Let's define it this way. Number one, an object will continue in uniform speed or motion. Let's act it upon by what? An unbalanced force. That's number one. Number two. F net equals to what? MA. When a net force acts on an object, the object will accelerate in the direction of the net force. Now, do, are you seeing the, my logic? So if I go to the diagram, they said the string breaks. Although the object is still moving up, it's not really accelerating up because it's slowing down. Does that make sense? So, we are saying the rope breaks. How many forces are acting on the object? All right, you're going to have FG and friction. So, immediate, okay, horizontal forces. 
Is that okay? Immediately the rope break, the rope breaks, the tension disappears. The object will still move what? Up. But it's not going to be in actually decreasing. So it's decelerating. It means the acceleration is actually going where? Down. Make sense? There's no matter there. Did it make sense, guys? Really? No. They would say up. Yeah, they would say up because remember the object is still moving up. So they would say up. But if they ask you to give an explanation, I just gave you F net equals to what? MA. Yeah? Somebody who drives. Okay. Immediately you, immediately, okay, let's say, no, that's a very good one. You're going up the incline, you're driving, you power, you're pedaling, right? If you leave your accelerator, the, the object is still going up, but does, doesn't necessarily mean it's accelerating. When is acceleration? When there is increase in velocity. But the object is not increasing in velocity there, right? It's actually decreasing. Awesome. <laughs> All right, are we okay? Uh, guys, I don't want to look. Can we pass this one? We, if you could, if we could do that, then we can do this. Is that okay? If we, because it's the same concept, so can we skip? However, mm, skip this one. Okay, let's do it because there's an unknown mass there. Fine. Let's walk through it. We're going to run very fast, guys. Time is actually flying here. Hey? It's past seven. Doesn't feel like it, ne? Yes. I will get tomorrow. You guys just bath and go to school from here. What's wrong? Yeah, we do physics the whole night. Okay. <laughs> All right, quickly. Um, I don't think there's anything. Guys, just do, it the no do the normal things we've been doing. Is that okay? Do the normal things we've been doing. You'll get your answers on this. Um, a block of mass moving out. No, guys, there's nothing here. Draw a label showing all the forces acting on the 10 kg. What are, let's, lab let's list the forces. Normal force, that's one. Apply force. Tension, three. Friction, four. FG5. We're done. But the only thing is you must know how to resolve your component. Can we quickly just do the resolving part and then you take it from there? Is that fine? All right. Once your free body diagram is fine, all right, we have normal, we have force applied, right? What else do we have? We have tension. The object is going to be moving left, right? Accelerates to the left. So friction is to the right and we have what? That. Do you see our five forces? What is this? FG, FK, tension, force applied, and what? Normal. Everybody okay there? Okay. Um, but can we then resolve this into our components? What are we going to have? What are we going to have? You still have a free body diagram there, right? Um, normal. Yeah. FG. What do we have here? Tension. But F applied. It is north east. What are we going to have? One will go up and the other one will go to the left. That there and this there. Put together quickly, everybody. What do we have? Normal. FY. FX. FG. F, K, and T. Guys, are you good with what I've done so far? What is the formula for F, Y? Go back to your diagram. I always like going back to the diagram. Go back to the diagram and complete the triangle. One would go this way. So, what is this? T, Y, and T, X. What do we know? The one facing or the one opposite the angle, what do we use? Come on, come on, come on. I, huh? Hey, guys, and you all kept quiet now. Come on. The one opposite the angle, we use what? 
sign. Come, I need that energy. So what is TY? 45, sign. I still said this yesterday. Please don't let us forget. And what is TX? 45, cos 30. I'm sure you can then deal with all the questions and get your answer. You'll be able to walk through. All right. I need to do this one here. I know I did this today with some of us that were in the quite interesting. All right. Got you. Got it now. All right. Adjacent buildings the same size, the same size. It means M is the same, right? The two walls nearest one another are seven meters apart. And the walls farthest from each other are what? 35 apart from that. Use an appropriate formula to show the gravitational force, right? What force is that? F equals to what? F equals to G M1 M2 over R squared. Everybody okay? After this, I'm going to work on the part. Uh, Frederick, is force applied not tension? Um, no. It depends. It depends. Um, let, me, let me go back to your question. Sorry, I just saw your message now. I've been off that computer for a while. Is it, is it, are you referring to this one? Frederick, are you referring to this side? Okay, hold on. Hold on. Sim, I, I'm, I, something is wrong somewhere. Uh, okay, I can't hear you. I need to sort out my sound. I don't know what's going on, but I, hey, I hope this thing is, yeah? I've done that before, two hours. <laughs> Funnily, is I'll come out and say, yeah, I'm doing this in the morning. Sometimes I'm up 4 a.m. to do a particular video. Guys, there's no sound. All right. Um, Frederick? Guys, I'm really scared. Can I save this recording and reset the whole system? Please. I'm very worried. One second, please.